Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Do More PLC Node Red HTTP request. Now, Node Red HTTP request can be used to read any BRICS or BRX Do More PLC memory area. The HTTP or Hypertext Transfer Protocol communication will only read information from the controller. Now, detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the BRICS Do More REST API is used to read information using a URL or Uniform Resource Locator or web address. We will be using the HTTP request node in red, node red to read information from our BRICS Do More REST API enabled controller. Writing using Modbus will also be shown. This will be done on our Raspberry Pi 4 single board computer. Now the Do More REST API setup. And the REST API really stands for Representational State Transfer or, and the API stands for Application Programming Interface. This will allow, a, allow you to use the URL with some parameters to read data from the BRICS controller or the BRICS Do More controller. This is available in version 2.8 or higher of the Do More Designer software and only applies to the BRICS or BRX Do More controllers. So what they will do is call up the um, system configuration menu by using the main menu PLC system configuration. And under the system configuration, what you will see is that we have down here our web server HTTP and right now you have to enable this uh, portion. If you go into the settings themselves, you will see here's my REST API. And so that's what you want to do. We want to ensure that this is actually on here. So since it is, we'll just hit cancel out of that. So that's where that's the first thing to do. The next thing to do is you can see that um, for added security, we have a server whitelist. And if we enable that, and look up the server whitelist, we actually will enable our uh, HTTP and REST API, and then we can add a range or a single address that we are going to be communicating to. So it'll allow them to in, uh, interact. Or we could add our entire um, location. So again, it's uh, a server whitelist can be set up. So I'm just gonna cancel that. And we're not going to be using that for our application. So anyone on the network can actually read and write or read through this uh, controller using HTTP. So that is that part. And then what we also should do is to look at the IP address. So in this particular case, my uh, do more controller is actually has an IP address of 192.168.1.11. If we look at the configuration of that, you will see that we have, um, it uses the following. So we've set a static IP of that address. And this is my submask, my gateway and DS, uh, DNS. So that is our configuration. And it's important to have a uh, static IP in order to determine exactly where this controller is when we do our requesting of the information using the REST API. So once we have that done or canceled, the only other thing to do is actually look at our Modbus TCP server as well. Because since we're going to be writing to this controller, we have to enable our Modbus TCP server. Now it is enabled by default. And if we look at the settings, you'll see here that we have um, our maximum settings of four, our client activity timeout, we, I've set for 3600. 3, it defaults to 60 seconds. Um, and then our default port is 502, which is the same for all Modbus TCP. So once we're done with that, we just uh, uh, hit OK and we transfer that to the PLC. So once we have that all set, we can actually, um, you notice that all I have here in my program is a end statement. And because of that, it really doesn't require any um, program in there to actually do the REST API. So let's test our API. And what we'll do is just call up our web browser 
in your web browser here, we've specified address 192.168.1.11 using HTTP colon backslash. And we specify inputs X zero and seven. And once we hit enter, you will see that our, there's our inputs. If we actually look at the hardware that we have here, you will see that here we have our Brix controller and we're in running and we have a uh, sensor here, capacitive type uh, uh, sensor. Then here we have our Raspberry Pi over here and it's actually running the node red, uh, grabbing information from our, our uh, Brix controller. And just to verify that we actually are communicating use the REST API, if I turn this off, and then we'll try um, cycling or try our input again, you'll see my first input is now off. Do that again, we'll refresh this, again it turns back on. So very quick and effective use, and here you can see that I'm reading my inputs. If I need to read outputs at the same time, all I do is add the and sign, and I can say outputs, and then we'll equals, and then we'll say from zero, and we'll read uh, six of them, comma six. Hit enter, and now it was, oh, bad request, because I forgot to put a Y in here y0 which is the actual address itself hit that and now you see my inputs and outputs so very easy to just put in a url request and get the information from your controller so now let's see how that will interact with node red so here we have our node red up here on the screen and you will see that the um, HTTP request node is installed automatically when we install node red. Information you can request from your web browser. So what you'll see is that we have a timestamp here. We'll read the bits in the uh, PLC and then we go to a payload and our message request, if I double click it, you can see that I'm asking, I'm asking for inputs like zero and I'm asking for 10 of them. I'm also asking for my outputs Y0, and I'm asking for eight of them. I'm also asking for uh, C bits, C0, and I'm asking for 128 of them. Okay. Then what you'll see is by return, I'm using a parsed JSON object. So I can read things in different types and get the information back in certain formats. They're the different formats, and I chose a JSON object, and that's what the um, REST API will bring back the information in. So, um, if we look at, we'll just cancel that out. And now let's take a look at our um, take a look at our debug here, which is look at my payload. And let's just activate my injection mode, going into my HTTP request, and it shows me my payload. I do that you can see here here's my payload request and it's highlighted from our message input and there's my inputs for the 10 my outputs the 8 my C bits 128 of them so again just like we did before here's my input so and I if I turn that off or take that first bit off and try it again you will see again my inputs and now it's off. So that seems to be working well. Next, what you can do is we can read, like I said, any of the memory areas within the uh, Bricks controller. So if we hit this request, this request will actually bring back my V memory in 128 of them, my D memory or double memory, and my real memory or real values. So let's try that. It will hit the eject mode and again you can see that we have our arrays coming back in a JSON format and our V memories are right here 0 to 10 and there's my parameters for those 
So you can read a lot of information very quickly out of this controller using the HTTP request. And finally, you can also read, unlike Modbus, a lot of the uh, text messages. So we can read our SS and our SL memory areas within our Do More controller. Select it and you will see now here is my SS memory and my SL memory and you can see the text messages or the uh, messages coming in here and these are text messages or ASCII codes that we represent. Now just a note of warning, we have to ensure that the the message or the text does not include any special characters like carriage return or line feed within those parameters because this will cause an error on the HTTP request node. So then finally, you'll see that everything that we've done so far is been just a read. And that's what HTTP request will do and that's what the REST API on the Bricks Do More PLC will do is just read information. If we want to write information, then we must use our Modbus uh, write. So here, what we're doing is we're going to read the first 10 V memory areas, and then we're going to bring those back in again as a parsed JSON object. And once we do that, we're going into a function block here, which will then take that uh, V memory area. And you can see that we just use it as strictly as a, a JSON uh, value here in our payload. We're going to be using multiple write using uh, Modbus. Unit address, unit ID is one, which is our address here. And then we have our address zero and we write 10 of them. Then we use our Modbus flex writer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the do more bricks PLC as our server and our, that's our IP address again, as we specified before. So what we're going to do is just hit send. And what you'll see here is there is my V memory area and there are my um, parameters. If I look at back to my uh, do more, you can see here that uh, here is my um, V memory area and they map directly to my MHR area or Modbus holding register area one to 10. So we're just copying those to here. And again, without any program that we have located in our, in our controller. If we start changing a few of these values, let's go uh, 50, uh, 51, 52. And then we'll just write those Okay, and I also write clear this memory out as well. So let's go back to our uh, node red. And again, what we'll do is just clear that and we will hit the um, transfer again. It shows me here from my payload what my uh, values are and they're the same ones that we had before or 50, 51, 52 that we just changed. Going back to our bricks, you can see here in my uh, data view, you can see again, these have now changed to 50, 51, 52, and the va rest of values. If we want to um, change them all the time, so what we can do is we can do a complete and add a complete on here. So once we've completed our Wild Blast Flex write, then what we want to do is go back and request again. So we can easily do that. And you can say here, once we have that um, done, then what we can do is go back and request this again. And now what this will do, and we'll deploy that. And what this will do then is go through here, request, do the function, do the write after that's completed, it triggers that again, which does a request and back again. So it continuously updates our values once we've started it. So what we'll do is um, we've already deployed that. And so we'll just start that up. And there we go, we're completed. And it's, there we go. 
And again, if we look at our do more and our values as they change, will change in here. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.